Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today I'm going to be talking to you about the MSI Creator 17. This laptop won the Digit 01 award for the best laptop for creators. And while I didn't get a chance to talk about exactly why in our Digit 01 award videos, today we're going to do a standalone review of it and talk to you about why this could potentially be the best laptop for your creative needs. But before we get into all of those details, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on our channel. And of course, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates from us. So let's go over the specs of the machine that we've got here today. This particular laptop is powered by the Intel Core i7 10875H. This is an eight core processor with 16 threads. Additionally, you get 32 gigs of RAM on board and two terabytes of NVMe storage. On top of that, you also have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super Max Q on board. And all of this is powering the highlight of this laptop, which is this gorgeous 17 inch 4K mini LED display. Now, mini LED is something that's very unique to this particular laptop is the first one to have this panel. And there are multiple advantages and a few disadvantages as well to having that. We get to go over that in the display section. OK, so let's talk about the performance of the MSI Creator 17. However, in order to do that, we also have to bring in its closest competitor, the Acer Concept D7 Pro. The reason for that is, in our testing, the two laptops are fairly neck to neck, with the Acer winning a few tests, but the MSI winning out a lot more. But not by a whole shot, so let's just go over those numbers in a more detailed manner. Okay, first, let's look at the Premiere Pro test. In Premiere Pro, we are basically working with 4K files, applying color grading to them, uh, exporting them and also using a timeline that is very heavy on the GPU. When that is the case, we'll see that the MSI Creator 17 ends up outperforming the Acer Concept D7 when it comes to uh, 4K H.264 video files, uh, 4K ProRes files, and also with 4K RED files. The 4K uh, timeline with the heavy GPU implementation is also rendered faster using the MSI Creator 17 simply because of the fact that Premiere Pro loves CUDA cores and the 2080 offers just far many more CUDA cores than what the Quadro on the Acer Concept D7 Pro has to offer. Moving past that, let's take a look at Lightroom. Now we're testing five importing of 500 RAW files and exporting of the same number of files in Lightroom. We have RAW files from Canon, Sony, Nikon of multiple resolutions in order to mix things up. When it comes to importing files from a Sony camera, Again, the MSI wins out. However, Acer favors the Nikon RAW files a little bit and ends up importing those at a faster rate than the MSI machine, but again, only by a hair. When it comes to exporting these files, irrespective of the camera from where these RAW files originated, the MSI Creator 17 is able to export them faster than the Acer Concept D7 Pro. However, consider this. 63 seconds to export 50 RAW files from Canon versus 66 seconds to do the same task on the Acer. Three seconds, not that big of a difference. And the difference actually remains the same across all the other cameras as well. Then let's move on to 3D. Okay. Of course, you may also want to work with 3D programs like Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, etc. We've got some numbers for them as well. Now, we are testing Blender render using both the CPU and the GPU. So first, let's go over the numbers from the CPU test. The classroom uh, project from Blender takes 239 seconds to complete on the MSI machine and 247 seconds on the Acer machine. It's very interesting to see this difference because both the laptops come with the same Intel Core i7-10875 CPU. This highlights the difference in thermals and also could have to do with the fast NVMe storage or the faster memory on the MSI. The BMW render also completes about 20 seconds faster in comparison to the Acer, with the MSI taking 665 seconds and the Acer completing it in 682 seconds. When it comes to the Blender GPU tests, we see the MSI Creator 17 complete the classroom render in 71 seconds, whereas the Acer Concept D7 Pro takes 93 seconds. The BMW test, while completes in 211 seconds on the MSI Creator 17, takes 247 seconds to complete on the Acer machine. Similarly, even for Fishy Cat, the Acer comes behind the MSI Creator 17 when it comes to completing the render. So we are seeing that the GeForce card does offer an advantage 
to the MSI Creator 17 over the Acer Concept D7 Pro, which comes with an NVIDIA Quadro card. And that advantage also extends over to the fact that this laptop can also double up as a gaming machine. So let's talk gaming performance on the MSI Creator 17. Now do note that the panel natively is a 4K display. So in order to really understand how good of a machine this can be, we tested just three titles, uh, Gears 5, Forza Horizon, uh, Forza Horizon 4, Doom Eternal, and of course, Shadow the Tomb Raider. How could I forget? So four titles. We ran all of these four titles at three resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. For each of those resolutions, we tested that these games at their highest graphic settings and the one below highest graphic settings, which we refer to as ultra and high. Now, only exception being Doom Eternal. Uh, Doom Eternal goes even farther than Ultra, going to Ultra, then Nightmare, and then Ultra Nightmare. But we don't get into that territory. We cap it at Ultra and the one below Ultra. So in that regard, once again, it's actually very interesting to see uh, the MSI Creator 17 push out some very impressive frame rates. At 4K, we are well above 30 FPS mark. At 1440p, we are easily hitting the 60 FPS mark across all three games. And when we go into 1080p, we also end up hitting up to 124 FPS. But as good as that may sound, the reality of the matter is that this is a 60 hertz panel. So as long as you're getting 60 FPS on any game, you're getting a good experience because you're not going to face any kind of tearing. So that's actually very critical. So the MSI Creator 17's panel is actually quite a brilliant one. The company claims that this is HDR1000 certified, which means it has a thousand nits of brightness and also supports 100% of the DCI-P3 color profile. Additionally, they say that this has been factory calibrated to have a Delta E of less than two, which is exactly what we're gonna check right now. So let's just go ahead and run a verification test on the panel. This is done using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus, which is um, designed for testing all kinds of panels with a peak brightness of going all the way up to 2000 nits. So the first verification run is complete. Let's just go over the results quickly. Okay. Now, right off the bat, we can see that uh, this panel was measured to have a peak brightness of 1,169 nits. Sorry, this is 1,196 nits. This shit is crazy. I mean, that's actually pretty crazy. Then we come to the color accuracy part and the average delta E of 7.94. Oh my god that is just terrible so all of the colors are essentially completely off as you can see um we have set this panel currently to its srgb mode so um you know that's actually pretty surprising now as you can see over here this is where we should have ideally been the 6500 mark but this is uh, where we are below 6500 around 6100 at various brightness levels the gamma is also off by a few, uh, actually by just 0.1, it should be 2.2, but it's around 2.16, 2.17, depending on the brightness you play at. But um, the RGB grayscale balance is actually pretty spot on across the entire brightness range. And then we see the color gamut just all over the place, as you can see. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna recalibrate this panel and uh, then re-verify exactly how good it is and how bad it is. Let's just go ahead and So, can you tell the difference? Is it visible? This is before calibration, this is after calibration. So it's changed a little bit. But what we're just going to end up doing is re-verifying this using display cal. So let's go back here. And click. Now, one of the things about this mini LED panel is that it actually gets pretty warm to the touch while it's uh, in use. So on the back over here, it's warm and you can feel some heat coming off the panel as well. And that's because 
right now it's running at a thousand its peak brightness um, and that is bound to generate heat as uh, it is used and right now what color profilers will do is basically they'll try and max out the potential of every single LED in here to you know light up as bright as it can and have show as deep of a color as it possibly can and as light as possible so it actually does push the panel to quite a bit of extreme uh, which uh, unfortunately during calibration ends up generating some heat what would be interesting to see is how this sort of behavior impacts the panel in the long run uh, there is no way to sort of verify that right now but uh, maybe over long term usage we'll be able to have that come out as well so um, okay now here's a cool part our average delta E is come down to 1.2 from the previous one. Now the only area where we have a slight uh, calibration issue is with respect to the color red and slightly with the orange one as well. Our color temperature has come to 60, very close to 6500, it's at about 6800 and that's because uh, while calibrating the panel we chose to go with a cooler tone to, go, uh, to boot. It helps balance out skin tones very well. The gamma has come more in line with 2.2 as you can see across the entire brightness range save for at 90% brightness so that's about at 900 nits you'll notice that uh, this particular uh, the gamma table falls off a little bit. Uh, RGB grayscale balance is again pretty tight not an issue there and we can see over here how our sRGB color gamut is actually spot on. So overall I think this panel is very 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 good um, it's just that you know you're gonna have to make sure that when you do work with it you're calibrating it to the right color space and that's going to be very very critical so the MSI creator 17 right if you want to upgrade it you want to do some changes to the insides whatever your first hurdle is going to be the 15 screws that hold this plastic back panel in and one of them is actually covered by a factory seal so if you pierce through that Bye bye warranty. Okay, so why 15 screws? I mean, what sense does it have when gaming laptops tend to have far fewer? I'll show you why. This thing's not even user upgradable. There's actually no access to RAM, no access to the CPU heatsink or the GPU. Uh, nothing. This is the inverted motherboard that I was talking about. And the only thing you can actually access is the one free M.2 slot. In fact, interestingly, okay, let me just do this. I'm going to remove this M.2 drive and show you the thermal pad that's actually applied. I'm not so sure how good of a design choice this is. Um, one, the thermal pad should actually be applied to the top where it's actually cooling the chip and the controller. Secondly, it's only actually covering half of the actual m.2 drive like check that out it's not even covering the whole m.2 drive and that's not like misalignment or anything it's actually by design because there is a wedge over here and you can't actually put this pad in here and expect it to sort of survive it'll cut right through and there is no point of that so it's not even the whole thing not very happy about that so yeah, let me just put that back. You do get a massive battery though, so that's nice. In case you guys are wondering, the battery life on this thing is about two and a half, three hours of very, very casual and uh, not heavy use. Uh, so as you can see, I tried getting in and this thing just sort of tore apart. And I'm not sure if I should actually be going any further because there's nothing to access here like there's nothing underneath this you have to actually unscrew the motherboard completely and then take it apart in order to sort of replace your ram or repaste the cpu gpu and one issue with that is um one of the reasons why it's not the whole you know you have to take take off more screws but the problem is actually these ribbon cables not only are they delicate but they're also very easy to break uh they're easy to put in wrong and they're very they're just delicate like reconnecting them can be a problem so especially like for example these thin ones over here um some of them 
are held in with a latch. Some of them are just held in with clasps on the side, like these over here. This is for the speaker. This is for the battery. Uh, this is for, I'm guessing, the keyboard. I mean, there's a bunch of things going on. So overall, upgradability on this is terrible, absolutely terrible. And I really wish this is not some, this is not the design that MSI should have adopted. And I do hope that with the next iteration of this laptop, you actually get uh, access to the memory modules at the very least. So there's that. So with all of the performance related metrics out of the way, last we've got to talk about the keyboard, the IO, trackpad and Windows Hello. The keyboard on this takes a little getting used to. For some reason, it's a little tilt shifted to the left and makes typing a little bit unnatural it takes little getting used to but perhaps the most frustrating thing is that there is only one function key it's on the right side of the keyboard not on the left and i'm just somebody who's used to using the function key on the left side so it, it, i end up hitting the windows key a lot and that causes errors or problems you know so i hope uh, i mean you can probably get used to it that's problem number one the other thing is with the trackpad although it's a really nice trackpad it's 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 got a very unique feel to it. Like when you're using the trackpad, the cursor moves in a somewhat sluggish, but still very smooth manner. It's slow to respond. It Think of it like a sloth, right? When a sloth moves, it moves very slowly, but it's not going like this. So your cursor will still move very smoothly, but just slow. Um, it is a very weird feeling. And the reason I know there is a difference is because one, haven't faced this on other laptops, Two, when using an external mouse, the cursor goes right back to normal speed. So I'm not really sure what's up with that. Uh, it's not really a problem. It's just something that I noticed. And I know for a fact that if I was using this laptop for long term, I would get used to it. MSI has built two versions of Windows Hello biometric authentication into this laptop. You've got a fingerprint sensor that's embedded right into the trackpad. And there's, of course, also Windows Hello uh, IR webcam hardware built in. So you can do facial recognition to log in as well. Then you've got the ports, a, a whole assortment, micro SD card slot, Ethernet, microphone port, headphone jack, super speed three, USB 3 ports, a Thunderbolt port, Type-C port with display port, HD, it's got everything. It's a laptop for creators and uh, MSI hasn't skimped out on the port offering when it comes to that. So if you're looking for good connectivity, you're not going to feel left out. There's plenty on here and thanks to the Thunderbolt port, you can add a whole lot more if you want using a dongle. There's also the aspect of sound. Now, as a creator laptop, if you're going to be doing video editing, you would want to know how the sound from this laptop is. Maybe you want to watch a movie on this machine and enjoy the speakers. Mm, enjoy is going to be a stretch. Don't be fooled by this grill on top. That's actually just exhaust vents for the fans that lie underneath. The speakers are actually on the underside on the front and they are loud, but they sound terrible. I mean, it's a sharp, shrill sound, and it's definitely not enjoyable. The mids and the treble definitely hurt uh, if you're listening to something that's very loud. And if you're looking for bass, there isn't any. Sound-wise, it's definitely a disappointment, and I would just very strongly recommend you use headphones or a good pair of earphones, wireless, wired, whatever may be the case, but just use cans, essentially. So that. So just let's just quickly conclude this review because I think the numbers speak for themselves. The MSI Creator 17 has excellent performance when it comes to Premiere, Lightroom, Photoshop even, and also 3D workloads like Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, etc. It's got decent gaming performance if you choose to game on it at uh, both 1440p and 1080p. 4K is a hit or miss depending on the title you're playing. Some titles can be extremely heavy and demanding, which this laptop will not be able to meet. But you can still game on it. The display is the real star. The advantage of this panel is not just better color accuracy, but a far brighter display. And the deal with that is if you ever want to get into HDR based video workflow, one of the biggest pros for HDR is the ability to pack in a lot more dynamic range, which is bright and dark spots at the same time in your frame. 
Now you can have your video go all the way up to a thousand nits of brightness and you can actually accurately see it on this display. Of course, this depends on whether what kind of video editor you're using and if your workflow supports that. For exa example, DaVinci Resolve does, uh, Premiere Pro does, you'll be okay if you're using either of those two programs. So this display does deliver and it opens doors to a kind of process that was typically limited to super professional systems and very, very expensive monitors. So you've got that. Thermals, unfortunately, are a little bit of a problem as we see that the 10875 does end up throttling at times and you can also feel the heat on the palm rest and in the center of the keyboard. Although it's not uncomfortable, but since this is winters, we're not feeling the heat as much. In fact, it feels comfortable. But if this was summers, I don't think that opinion would hold. So last but not the least, in terms of upgradability, 50-50. I like the fact that you can add more storage, but definitely not happy about the fact that the RAM is inaccessible and they've used the inverted motherboard layout. So that's a quick review of the MSI Creator 17. In case you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one.